seven inch tooth buried in sand reveals the most terrifying predator to have ever existed. This isn't just an ordinary fossil, it's evidence of a 65 foot long killing machine capable of crushing a whale's spine with a single bite. Megalodon teeth have been found on every continent except Antarctica, and each one tells the same story, total dominance of the oceans for over 20 million years. But what truly stunned paleontologists was what they discovered in the bite marks left on ancient whale bones, hunting patterns so precise, they redefined the meaning of apex predator. Imagine this, all you have is a single fossilized tooth, triangular razor sharp with serrated edges like a steel saw. No skull, no bones, no trace of skin or fins, just a shard of enamel lying silently in sedimentary rock. So how did science dare to reconstruct a monster longer than a city bus from something so small? That's where human intellect begins. From thousands of megalodon teeth unearthed around the globe from the rock layers of Panama to the coasts of Japan. Paleontologist Kenshu Shimada, 2003, developed a mathematical formula based on tooth size to estimate body length. The result roughly 50 to 65 feet, about three times the size of a modern great white shark. But it didn't stop there. Scientists applied finite element analysis, an engineering tool typically used in aircraft design to simulate bite force based on tooth structure. According to Rao et al, 2008, Megalodon could generate a bite force of up to 41,000 pounds, the strongest ever recorded in the animal kingdom. From a handful of vertebrae discovered in Europe and Central America, researchers calculated jaw span, estimating a mouth gape of up to 11 feet wide enough to swallow a human whole. Based on that, the body structure was reconstructed by comparing it to relatives within the order, lamniforms, particularly the great white shark, Carcharodon carcharius and Marco shark. A study by Pimiento and Bulk, 2015, even suggested that Megalodon may have exhibited regional endothermy, a kind of partial warm bloodedness, allowing it to hunt in cooler waters a major evolutionary advantage. However, because Megalodon's skeleton was primarily made of cartilage, which fossilizes poorly, all reconstructions carry a margin of error. Early models may have exaggerated its size by using great whites as a baseline, even though as Shimada et al. 2020 cautioned they are only distant cousins. Still, it is precisely that data gap that makes Megalodon so mysterious. It doesn't fully exist in the fossil record. It lives on in simulations, numbers, and evidence-based imagination. Science didn't just reconstruct a creature. It proved that sometimes a single tooth is enough to awaken an entire world. If Megalodon was a killing machine, then its teeth were the steel saw blades engineered for destruction. Unlike modern sharks, which have slender needle-like teeth, each Megalodon tooth was a thick triangular blade, nearly 1.2 inches thick, lined with serrations like a circular saw. These teeth were deeply embedded in the jaw with a honeycomb-like structure, not only enabling them to withstand immense pressure, but also designed to break easily so worn teeth could fall out and be replaced a non-stop factory line of weapons. In total, Megalodon likely had over 250 teeth arranged in five successive rows per jaw. As front teeth dulled or broke while tearing through dense flesh or crashing into whalebone, the rows behind would immediately rotate forward to replace them. Like an automatic reloading system, this ensured the predator was never unarmed in a fight. But what made these teeth truly terrifying wasn't just their structure, it was how Megalodon used them. Fossil evidence shows that Megalodon often aimed for critical weak points. The skull spine and pectoral fins places where a single bite could incapacitate a whale. Analysis by Eric et al. 2012 and bite marks found on Miocene. 
Whale bones reveal deep V-shaped gouges, a distinctive signature of megalodon, showing it didn't swallow prey whole, but ripped off massive chunks with a twisting motion after impact. Its jaw anatomy supported this tactic perfectly. While the great white shark can open its jaws to around 60 degrees, reconstruction suggests megalodon could exceed 100 degrees, creating a kill zone over 11 feet wide, large enough to engulf a full grown human without tearing. This turned its bite into more than just damage, it was wide area devastation. And that's not all. The muscles anchoring megalodon's jaw were estimated to be similar in size and function to hydraulic pistons. Finite element analysis, Rho Tal. 2008 showed that the biomechanical torque generated by these muscle blocks could rival a modern concrete crusher, enabling it to crush a whale's spine with a single bite. From a biological perspective, Megalodon wasn't just a bigger shark. It was a purpose-built design where teeth, muscle, jaw, and hunting strategy worked in perfect harmony as a strategic weapon. A creature that didn't just survive on brute strength, but on total optimization for the kill. No creature can claim true dominance without worthy prey and rivals that force it to stay sharp. For Megalodon, being Lord of the Oceans wasn't just about its colossal size. It came from how it shaped an entire ecosystem through the fear it instilled. Fossil evidence from sediment layers in Peru, Panama, the United States and Japan has revealed the unfortunate victims in the food chain medium to, to large sized ancient whales such as Piscobalena, members of Cetotheridae and even Basilosaurus, a snake like whale that grew over 50 feet long. On their ribs and vertebrae, paleontologists discovered perfect V-shaped bite marks that match megalodon teeth in both size and sharpness. But even more telling was the location of these wounds, the belly and hips, not the skull or tail. These regions contain vital organs and major blood vessels. According to Lambert et al, 2010, Megalodon didn't engage in long chases. It ambushed struck once and caused massive blood loss to disable its prey almost instantly. This kind of targeted strategy was once thought to be exclusive to orcas or mammalian predators. And it didn't happen in the deep sea, but in shallow coastal waters where whales came to breed. Megalodon picked its battlefield like a seasoned killer where prey was most distracted, where calves couldn't yet swim far. With a streamlined body like a torpedo and crescent shaped tail fins, it could launch from the shadows of the seafloor, delivering a bite force of up to 182,000 newtons, 41,000 pounds of force, enough to tear a whale's lower body in half in a flash. But Megalodon wasn't without rivals. Liviatan Melvilli, a prehistoric sperm whale from the same era, had the largest known teeth in the whale world, up to 14 inches long, even longer than Megalodon's. Liviatan was also a whale hunter with an aggressive predatory lifestyle. Some fossil finds even show bite marks from both Megalodon and Liviatan on the same whale bones, a strong hint of competition and perhaps direct conflict between these two giants. After Liviatan, Megalodon faced another threat, socially organized whales ancestors of modern orcas, ancient orchina species. They weren't as massive, but they hunted cooperatively split roles in attacks and crucially targeted young. No need for one-on-one -on -one battles. Intelligent predators only needed patience and strategy to wear down the apex. And finally, ancestral great white sharks. Smaller, but adaptable. As climates cooled and ecosystems changed, it was these faster, more enduring predators that filled the void Megalodon left behind, not because they were stronger, but because they were better suited to a new age. The strength that once secured Megalodon's dominance was no match for intelligence, agility and change.
around 3.6 million years ago, Megalodon quietly vanished from the oceans. No final fossil has ever been found. No evidence of a struggle for survival. Just an absolute absence, as if the entire species withdrew from history, leaving the oceans hollow after millions of years of dominance. So what killed a predator with no rival? The answer doesn't lie in a sudden catastrophe, but in a slow, merciless convergence of forces, climate, ecology, and evolution. The first and likely most devastating change was climate. The final formation of the Isthmus of Panama disrupted the flow between two oceans, triggering the development of the Gulf Stream and a global cooling trend. According to Pimiento et al, 2016, sea surface temperatures dropped sharply, shrinking the warm equatorial waters, Megalodon's preferred habitat and breeding zone, by over 30%. It wasn't just a loss of territory, but a blow to its ability to raise young. Next came the collapse of its food supply. Megalodon didn't eat fish. It relied on medium-sized whales, especially marine mammals during calving season. But as climates changed, many whale species migrated toward the poles where it was colder and less suitable for a warm water predator like Megalodon. Others went extinct altogether as coastal breeding corridors disappeared. For a predator weighing tens of tons, each meal had to be another massive animal. And when those vanished, starvation set in. Worse still, new competitors appeared. Ancestral great white sharks, smaller, faster and more agile, didn't have Megalodon's bite force. But they were regionally warm-blooded regional endothermy, giving them an edge in cold waters. Then came the early killer whales, primitive orchina species with advanced social structures, capable of hunting in packs, assigning roles and crucially targeting shark pups. A hypothesis proposed by McClellan et al, 2020 suggests that the rise of socially organized whales was a novel force in the ecosystem, one that Megalodon had never faced in its millions of years of dominance. Finally, Megalodon carried a biological burden. Its giant body made it nearly invincible, but it also meant long pregnancies, few offspring and slow maturation. For a species with a long life cycle, just a few failed breeding seasons could trigger a population collapse. While smaller competitors bred quickly and adapted well, Megalodon couldn't evolve fast enough to keep pace with the pressure. Megalodon didn't fall because it was weak, it fell because it couldn't change fast enough. Megalodon once stood as the pinnacle of oceanic evolution, a precision predator so advanced it needed no weapons beyond what nature had given it. Yet that greatness wasn't enough to make it eternal. Shifts in climate changes in prey and a new wave of evolutionary challenges gradually closed the final chapter on this monster without the need for a mass extinction. What makes Megalodon extraordinary isn't just its size or power, but the way it was reconstructed from near nothingness, a single fossil tooth buried in millions of years of sediment. It reminds us that in science, sometimes even a fragment is enough to unlock the door to the past. No longer swimming the oceans, Megalodon now lives on in laboratories, libraries and human imagination, a symbol of what nature can create and what it can erase.